looking over a menu is inevitably one of the first things a customer will do. But how much thought and planning actually goes into putting one of these together? While I wait to be served, we'll have a look at a classic menu sequence and classes of menus. You may have noticed that most European-based menus have a similar order to them. For example, dessert is always towards the end. This is fairly basic and common sense, but the menu sequence doesn't end here. For high-class establishments, the menu sequence can actually be pretty complex. In these cases, dining is all about the experience, and so there may be many different courses of varying sizes had over an evening. Soups are pretty self-explanatory, but most people don't realize that this can also include cold soups. Traditionally, this was followed by egg dishes, but you don't see these often on menus these days. After the egg dish, we get the last of our starters, which is usually a, a rice or a pasta dish. Then we move on to our, our main courses, either a hot or a cold uh, fish dish. And that then leads us into uh, the rest of our entrees. The entree is still a part of the main course options, but is typically a small, well-presented dish complemented by a gravy or sauce. Once this has been eaten, it's time to cleanse the palate with a sorbet. Sorbets are not part of the main courses. They are more like a half-time break. This is a frozen dessert, often made with water that's been sweetened and flavoured by fruit. But they can at times be alcoholic. Once the customer has been refreshed, it's time to get back into the main courses. So when we talk about the relevé, we're talking about the meat, the vegetables and the potato side of the menu. After this section comes the roast. Not so much a roast leg of lamb, but rather roast poultry and game. 接下来呢就是蔬菜。那么通常来讲的话呢，蔬菜呢它是一个开胃菜出现在菜单当中的。Following along the sequence, we come to salads, then a cold buffet which has a wide variety, including meats, fish, salads, and cheeses. If you're really into cheese, then this next option is for you. Cheese or fromage is the next stage in the menu sequence. And it's not just cheese on its own, but can also have fruit, bread and crackers. If, however, you're not into cheese, it's OK because now we've come to everybody's favourite, pudding. This is actually referred to as sweets and includes a wide range of desserts. And better yet, there are still more options to go. At the end of the evening, the dining experience wouldn't be complete without a beverage or a drink. This may include tea, coffee, espresso beverages, or liqueur or a port. Now that we've got a good base knowledge on the classic menu sequence, let's explore a little further into the different types of menu classes. There are two main classes that menus can be broken into. These are a la carte and table d'hôte. A la carte 呢就是零点服务的意思，也就是客人到了餐厅以后呢，一道菜一道菜的点，每一道菜呢都有一个单独的价格。on these menus, there is typically more variety, which is great for those who like to have lots of options in front of them. The term a la carte is often associated in our minds with expensive dining options, possibly just because it sounds French. But a fast food place is likely to have an a la carte based menu. You can order a cheeseburger, a side of fries, or anything else you want, and it's all individually priced. However, 
When you're dining in a restaurant, the a la carte menu can have a disadvantage, depending on how you look at it. In these cases, it can take longer for meals to be prepared and to arrive at your table than it would with the table d'hote menu. The reason for this is that in many cases, the meal doesn't begin to be cooked until it has been ordered. This helps to ensure that the dish is fresh and bursting with flavour. Keeping this in mind, if you're ordering a meal that takes 40 minutes to cook, you may want to order an entree as well. Table d'hote means table of the host, translated. This is where a fixed price is charged for a set menu or for a specific amount of courses. This can be very common if used in banquets or event management. Table d'hote is a really cool way of dining actually. Quite a limited menu, three or four different options. Obviously that's a good representation of the restaurant, but at the same time, if you don't find what you're looking for, it can be a wee bit limiting or you might not find exactly what's going to satisfy you. Tabla dot menus can be offered within some establishments and the purpose for offering this style of menu is to be able to provide quick and efficient service to large amounts of people. Some characteristics of a tabla dot menu would be set courses and set amount of courses within a menu. All menus have their roots firmly planted in these two different categories of a la carte and tabla dot. In some cases, menus may include elements from both categories and be referred to by different names. For example, in some cases the phrase menu du jour can be said instead of table d'hote. Other variations include carte du jour, which means card of the day. This can likewise be a menu with fixed prices for multiple courses. Slightly different from these options is a tasting menu. A degustation or tasting menu is a genuine menu that has samples of dishes from a main course menu prepared by the chef in the kitchen. This is a chance to taste different samples of a menu and generally these dishes come with a wine for each one, a wine matching to complement the dish. The classes of menu have a huge impact on how an establishment is run, whether it be an a la carte or table d'hote. These two simple factors can determine how many course options and how much variety is needed on your menu. It also influences how the meals are prepared and the expected waiting times. Not only this, but it also has an overall influence on how the restaurant functions as a whole. That's the end of our brief look into the classic menu sequence and classes of menus. Next, we'll be looking into the practical world of the inventory cycle.